end game content. The pinnacle experience for any MMORPG. That thing you strive to reach as you grind your way through escort quests and overpopulated NPCs to reach. That big thing you sacrificed your marriage for, not letting anything prevent you from living out your dreams. When you think of end game content in an MMORPG, that usually consists of raiding, max level dungeons, PvP, and finishing off that crafting that you've been doing while leveling to make the best gear. Pretty traditional stuff that most MMOs seem to follow. So what will make Ashes of Creation's end game worth the 200 plus hour grind to level 50? Well, before we get into this, look at this graph. It shows that we are a little more than 1% away from hitting that 20% subscribed goal. So if you're watching this and like Ashes of Creation content, you should be subscribed. So click that button and help us reach this goal and 10k subs before the end of the year. Ashes of Creation's end game content will look a bit different than what you have come to expect as an MMORPG player. Not in the sense that there won't be dungeons or raids, but in the fact that each server may experience different content. The world of error is alive and ever changing. Every Every day that you log in, something could be different. Whether that's a small change or a drastic server changing event, you never really know what to expect. Even the seasons can have some effect on the content you experience. I'm sure you've all heard this a few times by now, but Ashes of Creation's content is locked behind what are called nodes. And not just endgame. I mean most of the content you are looking to see, such as quests, dungeons, raids, sieges, crafting, resources, really everything. And in order for you to gain access to to this content, you'll need to level up those nodes. This is done by doing activities in certain zones, and every zone has a node behind it and as you adventure through the world, everything that gains you XP will also level up the node you're in, unlocking the world you'll come to know. One of the biggest parts of endgame content though will be its sieges. Castle and node sieges, which will put up to 500 players against another 500 for the fight over these nodes and castles. These fights which will be initiated by players for many reasons, whether it be guild drama or lust for server changing power that will shape the server and unlock new content. Although the castles which are meant for guilds won't be permanently destroyed, the nodes themselves could be, allowing for growth of new cities which means new content in other regions previously locked out because there are too many nodes developed in that same area. These sieges will be massive non-instance events that players will need siege weapons and good teamwork to take out various objectives to win the siege and take the server to the next stage in its story. For those whom would rather have small scale PvP, there will also be instanced arenas for players to fight in as well, allowing you to progress through the arena ladder system. Within these arenas, you can expect to have 1v1, 3v3, 5v5, and possibly a 20-man free-for-all deathmatch as well. Ranking up through the ladder system will unlock various rewards, which Intrepid has yet to reveal. For PvE, you have your usual raids and dungeons, although the difference in these compared to other MMOs is the majority are open world, allowing you to team up with 8, 16, or 40 players to take out certain bosses and obtain gear. The coolest thing about these dungeons and raids though that make them stand out is they evolve. The difficulty is based on the performance of your group and the better you do on the first boss the more challenging the next boss will become granting you better gear as well. Really upping the replayability of dungeons and raids as you can always get better and be rewarded when your guild really pulls it together. But you don't exactly need to do dungeons to get the best in slot gear. The artisan system will also grant you this for those who prefer to take a different route through crafting, progressing down an artisan tree to become one of the best craftsmen in Vera. You can do things such as craft armor, weapons, potions, you could breed mounts, you could build siege weapons, you could build ships, but you gotta think carefully because you can only pick one of these paths to master. If none of these work for you though, there is plenty more to do once you hit level 50 in Ashes and even before you hit level 50. You can buy or build your own ship and set out on the oceans, taking out bosses through naval content or exploring and fishing. You could join a thieves guild or an academy and head out on specific goals to help progress your node and your relationship with the academy you're in. You could become a master of trade, making your profit off driving 
caravans from city to city, or breed pets and mounts through the animal husbandry system in your own customizable freehold. You could even hunt down corrupted players through the bounty system. The possibilities of endgame content in Ashes of Creation are endless. You will have a hard time not finding something to do, maybe even so much so that you are overwhelmed by the great choice of what to do next. And by the time you finally think you've done it all, a siege on the server could all of a sudden unlock a whole new bunch of content for you to experience for the first time, really making the idea of DLC less crucial at the birth of this game. Not saying that there won't be DLC though, as Intrepid still plans to support Ashes of Creation through content updates, expansion packs, and all that after launch, adding to the ever-evolving world of Vera. What do you want to see for endgame content? Drop a comment down below, and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below, where you can jump in onto the forums or just prepare yourself to dive into the world of Vera. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.